we are on with video two of two yes only two today a lot of people are still knocked out from Cinco de Mayo um, LAC lithium story and it is in support but if LAC loses 17.4 I think it goes maybe even single digits it has a lot of support around 13 and 12 and a half but technically it's it is possible for it to finish this white arrow so I shared this white arrow a while back. I said target one would be here, which were, which is where they're bouncing from, and target two could be here. How could they avert av avert target two? Is this bounce be bigger than this one? So go above 24 and a half. Then you can convince me that you can. Otherwise, you're going to pull one of those AMDs, pop and drop and fade and come back down to finish the job. Technically, all right. So investment-wise, do your homework on the company. This is a, another technical comment. They're selling rallies into moving averages, so it may drift lower. Um, bearish sign number one if it goes to 18.3. You might end up losing this one. I think if they lose this one, it's almost a guarantee they're going to lose that one. How? They'll dip, lose it, pop. Get sold, dip, lose it, pop. And they fill this arrow. So, And, and a huge seller around 22.50. Just make sure your your expectations are realistic. If I'm long LAC, I'm not adding to LAC. Uh, LNG, um, Chenier. So natural gas, I think this is the story, right? I'm going to liquefy natural gas. Good support. Scattered, I like it. So it has support and backup support, and the backup support is a long tail. Let me go to weekly. But if you lose that support, you can easily get to 110. So LNG would be a good buy around 122 and definitely around 110 as a trader. Now, I would be worried about pops into 167.5. I think there's a massive seller. I want you to see something. Draw your attention to this candle right there. This candle right there, they call that a weekly doji. For a whole week, they were indecisive and they closed right there. And look at where they failed, right there, almost to a T. All these tails are inside that zone. So clearly, one, that line, 168 rounding, is pretty important. That's on a weekly basis. That's where that line is above. Repeat those same comments around 159. So that's also a resistance. And immediate resistance is at uh, 155. So great support, tough resistance. <laughs> Jacob. Okay. This one is in a breakout. Is that it? Yeah, it looks like a breakout. So this is one of those things where I say, why are you asking me? Permission to chase? Uh, not granted, unless you want to. This is what I call THTH. -th. It's too high to chase and too hot too short. So you missed it. <laughs> Catch it on the rebound on the bounce. If you know the business and you want to invest in it, please don't go all in. I wouldn't. You can do what you want. LTHM Livent. All right, so it looks like they respected support and they're trying to make higher highs. That's a good sign right there if they can get back above it. So 20, 24 rounding. If they can get to 25 this week would be outstanding without losing another low. Uh, then uh, the problem is 26.7. Anything above 26 is a problem. So you have room as long as they hold support. And if you lose that support, you're going to the low teens, which doesn't look like it's the scenario. Wow, look at the profits, the net income. What? <laughs> Let's see here. That is a healthy PL on face value, so whatever Livent does, it's legit. Induction lithium compounds. Okay, hmm. interesting. So I like it better than the other one. Lulu, uh, pile in everything. You mortgage the house, just jump in all in because this is a great place to get. No, I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. This is too hot to short. But it's very tasty. It's very tempting. You do have a catalyst here. If they take this out this week, they can get to 410, 420. So 
I think if it gets to here, I want to short it. Short. I'm tempted. It shows up on my screens all the time. This is a giant gap, but this is too strong. I think it might rally some more. Oh, earnings are coming. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the, you tell yourself how much uh, how much uh, upside have they baked into their minds? What are they expecting from those earnings? And Lulu, I mean, it's a good brand. When I found out why they called it Lulu, Google it. I'm not going to tell you. I'm surprised they're still allowed to call it Lulu, but there we are. So, shortable, but that's a tough short. If you do want to short it, use a debit put spread for a couple of months, maybe June, early June, because you don't want to be surgical. We don't know when it's going to fall, if it's going to fall, and you want finite amount of money at risk. Um, I don't like airlines, and I definitely don't like uh, Southwest anymore, but I don't mind this chart. Like DAL, I think it had support and a lot of resistance. So you can consider this like huge sellers and this pretty strong support, but not huge. So there's nothing near term below here. So if for some reason they go below 29, they could lose two bucks. Whereas a rally will meet sellers that are right here from like a couple weeks ago. That's what I don't like about it. But it is tradable long with stops. That's what I'm saying. Make sure you stop yourself out if it doesn't work out. Lift. Um, if you bought the dip here as a trader, great. If you add it to your longs as an investor, then you saw something in the earnings that I didn't. So as a trade, I get it. But look at my target. It did have upside potential that it failed to fill completely. And then um, it, and the scenario was it pops, it meanders, and then it comes back down to test this out. And then this showed up. So they kind of like wanted to do everything. This better hold. Otherwise, it'll be seven bucks. And this, I don't know what it's going to take to take this stuff out. This orange box is death for now. Okay, Mara. Um, I don't like to trade these companies because of the, of the stuff they sell. Um, so everything is tied to something that they don't control the price of. And on top of it, you have to worry about the company itself. This is nothing you would look at the PL and say, oh my gosh, no, it's not. A P it's, it's a balance sheet story. So technically, you have a seller at 11 and a trigger at 10.6. So you see the enticement, higher lows. So if I'm long, I can stay long. If I'm looking to invest in Mara, that's fine. Just make sure to know that it's pretty volatile. So don't go all in. It's just bites, bites. And if you long Beto, then... I don't think you need to be long in this one, right? This is a Bitcoin story, yeah. Meta. Um, don't fight Meta because it's too high. The uh, the options reaction, the, the earnings reaction probably gave you lines to trade for a long time. So the reaction in the earnings gave us all these peaks. So now we know that there is a seller, hard seller at 245. If for whatever reason it goes above 245, um, crossing above earnings massive spike fail so then I'd know if they take it out they're legit they're going to 260 270 so big gap below that it's enticing to short because of it but you're you're combating the metaverse idea which is a long time coming and it's an idea. It's hard to short an idea. Hopium is big with the idea. They don't need to be surgical. Oh, I don't care. In the future, it's going to be blah, 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 blah. They could be right. So don't short it because the stock looks extended. MPW. Tough seller at 9. Tough buyer at, at 8. Ping pong between the two. And if they take one, they go in that direction. Merck. Is this a all-time high? Yeah. Um, you missed it. You can be long it if you're a trader, but it's THDH. Too high to chase and too hot to short. If you're asking permission to book profits, uh, profits uh, permission granted. NRG. If this line fails, this is a weekly chart, so this is a slow-moving piece here. 
If 30.2 fails on a weekly basis, it probably goes to 22, but with a lot of buyers at 28, 29, and scattered buyers here. This is a weekly comment, so let's zoom in. Uh, you could get the 33, and then you're going to be met with sellers. What happens there? Hard bounce, I get it. If you lose 30.3, I think you go to 28.50. And the support is so old that it might not help you right away. I know that there's going to be sellers at 33. Be careful. NVIDIA is vulnerable, but also you're rallying on an idea of 3D. Sorry, not 3D. Artificial intelligence. So great machines, great reputation, great momentum. I wouldn't short it. It is shortable. And if you do want to short it, I get it. I'm not going to say don't short it. I said I wouldn't short it. But shorting it would be like shorting Lulu. You're you're going against the grain. And the easiest way to do it, either by a longer dated credit call spread or by a debit put spread that's wide or a combination of both. So like Ragu likes to do, uh, buy something but finance it with something else. So let's say you wanted to risk $2,000. Put a thousand dollar risk in a debit put spread and put another thousand dollar risk in a credit call spread. So they're both bearish. One needs a drop, one doesn't. So the bet is hedged and the out of pocket expense is smaller and the risk size is the same. So that kind of idea. I wouldn't short the stock outright. That's insanity. And if it does break out, I mean, let's say it dips a little bit and comes back and takes the 300 out, I think it goes to 390, if not 400. I wouldn't buy calls because of what I just said. I would buy dips into 220 if, it, if they come. 235 to 220 is a pivotal zone. You guys um, find these ET, obscure ETFs. I sure hope you're not using options to trade these because there's no way these options are liquid enough for me not to be at risk. Uh, 48 is a catalyst up to say 49.50. You have a pretty strong buyer at 46. I would be shocked if it loses it. What is this? How can an ETF do this? See, if I see an ETF and it does this where it drops 4% and recovers in the same day, easy to buy. But what is this? How can you explain an ETF doing this and still respect it? It's just bizarre. Hard to get rid of, so it's manipulated. Yeah, so stay away from it. Stay away from it. What can you do with this that you can't do with the spy or something? Whatever it is. Oracle. Not an obvious entry point. This is a weekly candle. You have a very, very green week. I mean, my goodness, this one, 18% weak in Oracle and then immediately gives it back up and never recovers it and then I finally you're in the middle of it so I would imagine this is a tough spot anything above 100 is going to be difficult if it gets to 108 it's definitely shortable with a stop if it goes above 108 I'm out okay Oracle is an ancient company so don't argue with it too much they've been around the block they've survived a lot so just that it's not that exciting PL, I think it's solid PL, so you can't short it with conviction, is what I'm saying. Buy the dip mode. 93, maybe 90 better for me. Uh, Palo Alto Networks. Did we trade it? Why do I want to say yes? Maybe, maybe not. Sellers into 187 and 190. So if you get there, the closer you get there, the smaller the opportunity it is. Then you would be in a buy to dip mode. So if this dips towards 180 and 178, yes, get long and stop out below 176. Losing 176, it probably takes it to 164. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, are you serious? Look at this. Perfect price action. So this was our forecast. It came pretty close. It can still finish the job. How? Let's say this rally here has sellers. Like I told you, it's going to be sellers here. And it and it curls up for, for some reason and it does this. It will finish the job. I'll just put it here. Okay, so there's going to be sellers is what I'm saying. At some point, it will stabilize. 
Uh, Paramount. Uh, I'm reading some bad stuff about Paramount. <laughs> uh, leave it alone. If you're stuck in it, I would manage my exit point somewhere. Pretty hard bounce levels, but if for some reason you lose 15.3, you're probably going single digits uh, eventually. There's going to be a lot of sellers everywhere. Not for me, for sure. I read that they uh, they lose a lot of money and they're like the fifth or sixth largest streaming platform. Pen, I'm interested. It's on my list. I, I would have gone long on this dip, but I chose something else. I forgot what it was. I didn't want to go long two or three things in one day, so I chose one or two. Pen is on it. Pen has good business. It fell. They, they, they grew business and they forecasted the same and because they didn't raise their forecast they sold the stock down whatever 13 percent good solid business the danger is if it loses last week's lows you may be able to enter it at 22. what yeah um i would do a credit put spread or a sold put to own shares i can start with a credit put spread and in the middle of the week if i think we're going to be okay i would sell the protective put for extra credits so turn it into a sold naked put good business though i mean it's a the pnl is good and they, they they do have brick and mortar business too pinterest you could convince me to go along it's like etsy and like um the one we were just on pen i wouldn't go long everything so i just didn't have enough things to go along i mean at the same time um 1819 should be bulletproof and it's at 21. So if I sell a put in the 1819 area and I get a sign, not a big deal. Rallies are going to be labored, so I don't expect upside if it comes over time. That's great. Uh, Pub M. Pubmatic. This sounds like a joke from like Al Bunty, the Binford 5000. Um, <laughs> if anybody knows what that is, that's hilarious, right? Okay, so. Let's see here, RZ2. Clearly we have resistance here and here. And they're losing support now, which is, uh-oh, because they lost this guy. So losing this one is usually a dip down. How far down? I don't know. Avoid, avoid. Oh my gosh, yeah, avoid, it's all time low. You don't know what lies beneath unless they take out 12.50 or three. Earnings on Thursday. Thanks for the heads up, Jax. Yeah, mm, not for me. Uh, study the company. This B&L looks good. I don't know why they're freaking out, but they're trading it lower lows and such. So nothing for me. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I don't know why they're freaking out about it. So do your homework. It's a gamble. Qualcomm, I was looking to go long, did I? I don't remember, but it was one of those stocks I wanted to go long on the dip. I think I sold naked puts in Qualcomm. I don't remember what level, 85 I want to say? I think it was 85. So I would be assigned shares at 85. Um, oh yes, so they had a drop in sales, which was significant. And then people read into it at a super big drop in Apple, which is why Apple reacted positively because Apple's report was not good. It just wasn't full crap like they expected from Qualcomm because supplier to Apple, they thought, oh my God, if Qualcomm was falling, sales fell 20%, what is Apple? Apple sales shrunk a little bit. So it was a relief rally on Apple. It was like, whoo, thank God it wasn't a Qualcomm. So Qualcomm has a problem. So one can assume that 100 is going to hold but if 102 fails, it can go to 95 or 92. I sold an $85 put, so I could be assigned shares down here. Um, if that put is profitable in the next week or two, I would close it, buy it back for partial gains. I, I don't, I'm not in love with Qualcomm. I was just trying to make money off of people freaking out. Anything above 112, 113, 114 is going to be very, very difficult to regain. QSR. Restaurant brands, international. What do, what restaurants do they have? Burger King? Oh, okay. Popeyes, Tim Horton. All right, so famous. Um, okay, so this stock on a weekly basis looks like it's breaking out from the resistance in last May, a year. And it has bigger resistance that go to 2019. 
So be careful. This is a unusual. It, it's breaking out and it's running into 2019 levels. Very few stocks were talking about that. So hard to short. If it falls into 64, I think it would be a good opportunity. It has a lot of buyers into 65, 64. So it's a buy to dip thing. I definitely don't short. It's still going to break out. The, ba the bulls have it. They're buying dips in an ascending channel. Rivian, um, okay, so if I was assigned shares in Rivian and at 1250, like I believe I had a credit put spread, I would have exited here with profits. Um, it has earnings. It's a crapshoot. I think people will be focused on how many you can produce, not rather how much you can buy, uh, how many did you sell, because we know they can sell everything they make, I'm thinking, if they lower the price a little bit, but... Um, it's a story of, for me, what's their relationship with Amazon looking like and what's their facility looking like, how many they can produce. Technically, I think it comes down to 12.8, if not 12.5. At that point, it would be technically better to go long. If you lose 11.80, you're going to like 7. Just, I would not add longs if I have them already. SAP, wow. Definitely not a place to get long. Vulnerable did not play out, so those two were wrong. We'll eliminate the evidence. No, I'm just kidding. Um, tough spot to go long. If I'm long, I would exit. I would re-engage long on a dip. I wouldn't short it. Shopify, so they sold part of their business. <laughs> this company is like, how can we, f how can we screw our investors the best way possible? The CEO, I respect the business. But they seem to, to make the stock move one day before the earnings. And it could be in either direction. One time they caused the stock to fall 16% by going on Kramer's show on Fast Money and saying something bad about the earnings. Uh, the day before his earnings, how was he allowed to do that? Maybe it's because he's a Canadian company. They're not bound by the same rules. I just find it mind-boggling. Anyway, um, I don't know. I'm speculating. Maybe it was a mistake. But here they are, a day before the earnings, they come out and say, oh, by the way, we're going to completely change our business. And they're selling assets. So the stock skyrocket. And I wouldn't touch it here. I mean, it's a great company, but God, you know, I'm not chasing it up here. Okay. I, I think I may have a sold put or a put spread or something, but um, this is not for me. Breakout looks like it can go to 90 so if you're long and you want to stay in it, fine. If not, I would buy the dip. Uh, this is an amazing pump job. And, uh, you know, technically I could explain how we can get to 90. But I can also tell you that there's going to be a problem here. Shopify used to be a pretty fast mover. So respect it. Don't short it. Silver is like gold. If you force me, I would go short, but I'm not going to short it. Silver is a meme stock. Um, if silver takes out uh, 24.2, I think it can get to 26.5. Luckily, trading SLV is pretty cheap. The unit is like per contract. And don't mess with spreads. Don't do spreads in the SLV. And don't use out-of-the-money calls and puts. I would do at-the-money calls or puts, whichever way you want to bet, out in time. Don't do diagonals. Don't do anything. Just take a bet and stop out if it doesn't work out. Uh, it could be 2150 in the next three weeks or 26. If you force me to choose, I would say lower before higher. SMCI, you saw I sold a put and it delivered profits right away. I still have some sold puts, so that played out. I would not chase it higher. It fell on something and I said, that's an opportunity to go long and look at it. Whew. Wow, that's amazing. Can shop fill the gap? It can, but I think it needs the market to have a hiccup all by itself. Why would it do that? I don't know. I wouldn't buy puts in it, though. Shopify. The question, can Shopify fill the gap from last week? Like, can it fall back down? Um, this one's gone. Leave it. SoFi. Uh, okay, so here's SoFi. I said, go out and buy shares. And then the next day, it fell apart because of the whole market dizzy. And I hadn't bought shares. So I went out and bought shares the next day. So I got a better entry point. I bought in the money calls is what I did. 
because I felt bad that the day after I said buy shares, but it was a partial investment for the long term. So over the long term, it st may still work out, but the start was nasty. I would not have added to my shares and I would not have bailed on them had I bought them when I bought them. And I would still be red. Let's see, what's the price? Yeah, it would be red, I think about 50 cents per share. So not the end of the world. Shopify has got a good story. I mean, SoFi has got a good story. I think um, it's just a misunderstood business. So if the markets are higher in the future, those shares should play out well. If I have enough, maybe I would consider selling covered calls, but I don't know if it has enough premiums. So this is a base. I, If I'm long, I would stay long, and I am long. Square, I am long by sold put. I would do it again. Um, this was the Hindenburg headline, so you have to pay attention to it. Um, Hindenburg headline and then a whole bunch of uh, support below it from the October correction. I would sell square puts with confidence. Uh, the only one uh, that would scare me headline is that oh yeah Hindenburg was right at some level then it falls to 50 and then I would sell more puts because I go by the business and squares business is pretty good. So we'll see. Uh, Wow, the day that's a good PL. Why is the stock acting like it's going out of business? Okay, technically, 70 is a very pivotal spot, and so is 72. So, until they can take out 72, I, I don't want to be long. And if I am long, I would stop out fast. Uh, I think you should stop out based on dollars and percents, not levels. This looks like a pretty strong buy, so. Do you stop out here? No, because of this. Do you stop out here? That's probably too late. So how do I do it? If I take a thousand dollar bet, I put a dollar amount that I'm willing to lose and nothing more. Don't use the chart. But I mean, the PL is too good and the chart is too bad. So what are we missing? If I'm long, I'm not doing anything. STNE, not for me, not here. It can go to high heaven, yes. Uh, this is a Brazilian transactor, I think. Look at what it's going into right now. 15 to 17, 18 is going to be super difficult. Although it is a breakout, it is not for me. Uh, very strong breakout. It's definitely not for me, though. Suncor, they're selling rallies. 30.50, there's a hard seller. Until it goes above 31.50, I don't believe this rally. Strong base even stronger seller. So you have a strong buyer from last week and a huge seller from last couple of months. And this is the target zone that has come to fruition a few times. Maybe sell a put to own shares in Suncor, if you know the business. I do know the business. Hey, cool story. This is the first stock I was assigned share from selling puts in, in 1903, you know, when I was in high school with, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but that was the first stock I was assigned shares. I think it was $30. Wow, it is $30 now. That's crazy. But it split a few times. Earnings are coming. Okay, then that's no touch for me if the earnings are coming in Suncor. Thanks for the heads up. Um, 272 to 268, good support. A lot of resistance into 296. So do with it as you want. I know the rallies may come and they're going to be met with sellers. And if the sellers win, they're going to lose last week's lows, come back down to this area, which would be a much better base. Oh my gosh. Okay, so if I don't trade Alibaba, I definitely am not going to trade 10 cents, something that uh, is also delayed. Technically, is like Alibaba. It's in a base. Okay, I would trade the base, but I would not trade the stock at all. Headlines everywhere. I wouldn't touch it. But as a chart... If you lose 42, you're going to 39 or 38. Meanwhile, you have sellers at 45, 46, 47. Vulnerable, and it's living out its vulnerability. This arrow is playing out. Uh, what is this? Travel-related services. Oh, that's trip.com. Okay. I don't remember this. Wasn't it called trip before? Oh, C trip was trip. The C trip still in business. Okay, so the pivotal zone is 32 to 31. 
it may bleed down there after rallies. So if it gets a rally to 35 or 34 and a half, I think it'll be met with sellers. And you're in danger of curling down and losing last week's low and bleeding down towards the arrow. The closer you come to my arrow, the better. And there's a gap fill here, and I'll put an alert. Not every gap fills, but it's always interesting. So Jacob asked earlier, can it come back and fill the gap? So Jacob, not every gap fills, but if we're headed in the direction of a gap, the gap becomes a magnet. But if we're running away from it, if we're rallying and there's a gap below, the gap is not a reason for the price to come back down. But if we start coming back down, the gap becomes a magnet. That's my interpretation of gaps. Uh, okay, team. Went long team, sold the 144 put. I would sell it again. So if we dip into 130 or 125 this year, this week, I may re-engage by selling another put. The first trade worked. I'm aware that if they lose this support, they can go much, much lower, but that is not a likely story unless the market also curls back down. Uh, so if I'm long, I would exit if I lose that level. Otherwise, I would expect sellers at 145 and 150. TQQQ. So this is the story of the NASDAQ. Um, I wouldn't touch the TQs. You guys love them. Uh, do it. I wouldn't do spreads. Just buy it and 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 um, buy it shares or buy calls in the money or at the money or puts, whichever. When I cannot explain the logic behind how it does not track, the thing is supposed to track well, then I don't want to touch it. And it doesn't track the QQQ. If it did, it wouldn't be at the same level it is right now. Anyway, any high above the last high that we've had will get you quite a bounce. 30, 50, 31 are doable this week, just as is 25 and a half. If we go to 25 and a half, it's catchable with stops because if we lose 25.1.2, we may come down to here. So, which means the NASDAQ is correcting 10%. So we have a breakout. 3 to 5% breakout versus a bunch of support scattered that could end up being down 10% in the NASDAQ, which means we need a headline. So the upside is more probable than the downside. So if you're holding calls, I don't blame you. I am long the IWM, so you and I are on the same boat, as I've disclosed already. Who is this? Tesla. I'm long Tesla by short a put, and I shared it with you, several of them. Uh, I shared probably five or six trades on Tesla this year, haven't lost once. In fact, I cannot even remember the last time I lost money on Tesla because I trade it very consistently. When everybody hates it, I sell puts in it or put spreads to own shares. And that's it. And they all panned out. Um, at some point, Elon would leave and that stock will get collapsed. Uh, so I will probably be caught like FRC to a degree. But until now, it's working fine. Um, rallies are being sold inside of a descending channel, respect it. So you're going to have resistance into 176. You do have solid support. There is a big gap down in the 40s. So if it falls to 144, it's not surprising. I was expecting it. But last week, the way it ended on Thursday, Friday, they broke out from a prior fail, which gives this uh, turns this area into support again. It was iffy, but now it's back into support. TTD, um, long-term pivot. So taking longs here, you should know that it's a trade. And first, if you take this out, you have a chance of taking this out. But these are two strong sellers. So it has a lot of resistance, but it does have a lot of support and higher lows. So I see, that, I see it. Range is going like this, getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Boop at some point or dip to get a better base. So for me, if it falls into 59 or even lower, it's an opportunity to engage in, on the long side. And uh, the breakout will come eventually if markets allow it. Twilio has earnings, otherwise I would not I, I would not hesitate to go long on this dip. I refrained. So we'll see what Twilio does. Um, I don't want to sell naked puts into the earnings. Otherwise, I would have done. I would have done it three days ago. Here, I was very tempted, but uh, I had sold puts years and years ago at twenty-five, and it fell into my puts, and I made money, but it was by miracle. So I guess I'm still bruised. 
<laughs> my my memory of it. Uh, 54, 55, 56, sellers. What happens on a dip is the question. If they hold 51, I think they get to 59 in the next couple of months. You, 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 you. What is that? Mining development company engages in the exploration, valuation, of uranium. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, breakout. Breakout. Don't stand in its way. It might be going to 6.4. So any dip is an opportunity to stay long or engage in it long because it might curl up here. Having taken these two out and this one with confidence makes them a base. So any dip into 5.6, 5.7 should find buyers and they should be able to curl back up and attack this area and finish the job. Should, should, should. We'll see. This guy has sellers. You can see how they're selling rallies. Um, the proof is in the pudding. If they can hold 13.4, 13.3, and take out 14.6, I believe that they may be done. Otherwise, they, they they hit our target and then some. There are sellers here. So there's going to be sellers and support. So that's the battle. What do these boxes say? Long-term base, target one. So we got the target one, a long-term base. So... If I'm long, I can stay long. Sure. In the end, wing. Uh, somebody was trading this one. Gint, are you here? Yeah. I don't know anything about the business. I would not get long. I think it may curl up and come down to 200 or 195. That's gut. 200 and 195, I think, before 225. XBI, it's in a breakout. Oh, my God. Energy? No, not for me. Um, which means inflation is going to get a lot worse, which means all stocks will fall. 83 was a breakout for XBI. It is resistance, and they, they slice through it. More resistance, and they're slicing through it. It's a hard start, but it might get to 90. It's been on my list to trade from down here and I and here, and I just didn't do it and didn't do it and didn't do it. And uh, now it's too late for me to get engaged, but you probably are headed to 89, 90. XLI, the industrials, so violent these days. Um, who's in this? Is it like Clorox and something like that? Are those the industrials? No, GE and uh, Caterpillar and, and such. So the world is not growing. Dina is just from looking at the chart, looking at the candles, where it's failed before, uh, where it's bounced before. Somebody's asking me, well, how do I know there are sellers? Well, I know there are buyers here because that's what happened last time and here and here. I know there are sellers here because that's what happened last time. Sold, 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 sold. So next time they come to here, like, wait, we had sellers here. Are they still there? If they if they take out 101.8, then we go to here, where there are more sellers up top. So a lot of support and a lot of resistance stuck in the middle. Maybe an iron condor. Exxon um, shorted Chevron. I have not reshorted anything. If this gets back into 116, I would be tempted to reshort something. But I'm going to leave uh, our energy alone. Um, if if they take out 120, then we're talking 140, but I would be shocked. If that's the case, then we have had something major in the world, and the price of oil is huge again, which means that we have bigger problems than, than the stocks. I think if you're pro-lower inflation, you want these stocks to fail, because the biggest component, well, a large component of inflation is the power, the, the energy prices. It affects everything we buy, everything, and on multiple points. So let's hope these guys fall, which means that everything else can flourish. Right in the middle of the range. So if you're buying a put, you're guessing. If you're buying a call, you're guessing. Iron condors might work. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, an iron condor might work. Great companies, by the way. They're well-managed. Dividend is as safe as dividend can be. XPOF, exponential fitness. 
boutique fitness. Okay. I do not like fitness businesses except for Planet Fitness. They have 7,000 members. Planet Fitness, I read one one place and it's totally true. The reason why it's successful, I used to own a business. I, I owned a part of a gym. Turnover is like 140%, if you can believe it. You turn over your membership more than once every year. Typical uh, fitness places. Planet Fitness does it differently. They target the people that don't go to the gym. So they they can have 7,000, 8,000 members in one gym because they don't go. It's not an issue. Other gyms, they have a limit of like 400, 500 maximum. So that they have a capacity problem. Whereas Planet Fitness, they, they, they get the money low amounts with high numbers because they get everybody that says they have a gym membership, but they don't go. So that's the secret. I don't know anything about this one. Technically, uh, 27 looks like Pivotal. So it fell into support. From a technical perspective, you can say, okay, I wouldn't get out of my longs, but I know that a bounce will have sellers at 32. Gyms are a business, a day-to-day -day business. Planet Fitness with 7,000 members, each store, they can make money. Oh, that's it. We Okay, we have a request. Let's look at the VIX. All right, I'm not sure what we want to look at the VIX. The VIX is pretty low, a lot lower than its average. So, which tells me that the VIX is pricing the S&P fear by the market maker. They're worried about 28 days out. So, it's not looking for the fear now. It's looking for the fear 28 days out. So, if it's low, that means the market makers are saying or suggesting that they feel that it's whatever is going on here. If we have hiccups, don't worry about it. 28 days out, everything will be fine. That's how I read it. So, I'm not sure what else you want to see. This is a baseline. If I needed insurance for my assets, this is pretty pretty cheap. Pretty cheap way of covering my assets. SAP TSX. TSX. Oh, 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 oh. Um, this one? Or the SAP? This one? Okay. Okay, not an obvious entry point. I say that with confidence. This was a place of failure from before, and it's spread out from here to 150. The red one. This one. The Toronto Stock Exchange. Same comment. Um, you have a lot of sellers above, 36 to 37. And it looks like you have a pretty strong buyer into 32, scattered. So if it falls into 32, somebody wants to get long for a swing back up, that's fine from a technical perspective. Uh, you have more buyers at 30. So pretty strong support below and decent resistance, but not insurmountable. So if they take out 38, they can get to 42. Okay, we are done. This was quick. I have to get ready for another presentation after this i have a small break in between thank you for being here um hopefully we will have a good week in the market happy sunday hopefully we won't have another bank fail you're welcome thank you for being here i appreciate it will do and ragu don't worry about it tomorrow will be fine <laughs> we are forgiving you're welcome lou Joseph, hey Billy and D, you too have a good day. See you later, Tim. Jacob, thanks for the uh, back and forth. You're welcome, Susan. Mr. Newton, later, Carla. Happy Sunday to you too. All right, let's go do something fun. Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan took care of that issue for the Fed. Yes, really. Um, just, I can promote you right here, right now. Let me stop recording.